Greetings friends, it's me, Wayman29 again, and I'm back with another video on Paul. And we're going to try to go through this. This video, um, I'm going to try to lay the foundation for the claims that I made in the last video. And we're going to be using Bart Ehrman's, for this video mostly, uh, Bart Ehrman's The New Testament, A Historical Introduction to Early Christian writings. There it is. And um, you can see I have, I have a lot of tags in here. The reason why I'm using this text is because of the way he breaks it down. And also, um, he gives some really good um, uh, reading suggestions um, that I myself have, have read as textbooks five years ago back in a Jesus class I took at college. So I'm going to share that information with you. Firstly, we're going to find out how um, the religion of Jesus, which is Judaism, became a religion about Jesus. And on page 283, he has these little bullets uh, here, um, which are very helpful. It kind of breaks it down into easier, understandable terms. So I'm going to be reading a few of these so we can get a better picture of the mindset that uh, Judaism uh, believers or followers, uh, disciples of Christ, um, made the leap from Judaism to Christianity. Here it is. Uh, Christianity is best understood as beginning not with the teachings of Jesus per se, or with his death or resurrection, but with the belief in his resurrection. Once his followers came to believe he had been raised from the dead, and so had been shown unique favor by God, they reconsidered his teachings. Three, they began to claim that he himself was the Son of Man and had anticipated that he was not simply close to God, but was the unique Son of God, and that he was not simply their leader and master, but he was Lord of the whole world. They also reflected on the meaning of his death in light of their scriptures. Finding passages that referred to the death of God's righteous one and taking them to refer to Jesus. These Christians then developed the idea, unknown to Judaism, that the Messiah was one who would both suffer and die. Different Christian communities developed various understandings of who Jesus was and what he had done. Some, but by no means all, of these different understandings are still reflected in our earliest Gospels, those of the New Testament. The Gospels may appear to represent the same understanding of Jesus, but to some extent this is only because they have been placed side by side within a canon of Scripture. So, some of the suggested readings on this, friends, if, if you want to go here, these are excellent texts. Uh, Raymond Brown, um, The Death of the Messiah, From Gethsemane to the Grave, uh, is two volumes, and uh, one that I, I, I had in, in college uh, as a text is uh, Raymond Brown's An Introduction to New Testament Christology which is pretty good. And also, uh, the text that I mentioned that we'll be using, uh, that I mentioned in the last video, the um, New Jerome Commentary, Raymond Brown is uh, the editor of that. So here, Bart Ehrman uses them as extra, extra reading. And um, so we may look at some of his stuff. So what do we do about Paul? And uh, what was some of the stuff that... Um, made him maybe a little bit different than everybody else. And what was he trying to say? And why was he so uh, controversial? And many of you asked about um, James, and we'll be getting into that. Um, there's some very good authors out there. And, mind you, these are all hypotheses. Hypothesis. We don't know for sure. But all these hypotheses 
help us to see the text from different angles that maybe we, we haven't before. So, the theologies on how to read this literature, who Paul was, the differing opinions, are just that. Hypothesis. So, I could be wrong myself. Mr. Ehrman here could be wrong. Mr. Mr. Brown, Raymond Brown, could be wrong. But, they at least um, come up with pretty good um, evidence for their argument, and we're allowed to ask them questions. So, to start out, what, what writings were, um, do, do most scholars hypothesize, were really from Paul, and which maybe are questionable, and which ones are really questionable? So, to start out, um, the undisputed Pauline epistles, here it's, um, again, from the New Testament Historical Introduction to Early Christian Writings by Ehrman, um, page 287. The Paulian Corpus. Undisputed Paulian epistles are Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1 Thessalonians, and Philemon. Philemon. The Deuteropaulian epistles, which were uh, pro probably uh, pseudonymous, were Ephesians, Colossians, Thessalonians. The pastoral epistles, which definitely are, uh, pseudonymous, uh, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, and Titus. So the most important texts are Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1st Thessalonians, and Philemon. So, um, as you're reading these, these would probably be the most important uh, to read uh, first. Most of these aren't very long. They only take about 15 to 25 minutes uh, each maybe to read and, and think about a little bit and next video we're going to be comparing what um, who the Apostle Paul was a little bit and we're going to be comparing the differences the differences between what Paul says in his writings as compared to uh, what Luke or, or the text attributed to Luke which would be Acts uh, has to say about that and we'll be looking at uh, those differences in the sequences of how events happen. And for those on my last video who um, was asking about the Church of James in competition with Paul, what was the conflict? Um, Eisenman, who put out some very controversial hypothesis about that, is uh, his book, The Dead Sea Scrolls and the First Christians. In here, he hypothesizes that James, the righteous, is also the teacher of righteousness that was written about in the Damascus document of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, he lays it out pretty well. And later, we're going to look at some of those Dead Sea Scrolls and compare it to the writings of Paul and compare it to the letter of James and see where such terms as salvation, justification, and other theological ideas uh, came to be, because um, for anybody who has read the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, you can pretty much see these ideas uh, there. So, how much that influenced the new Christianities, Christianities um, we don't know, but those ideas are definitely there. And also, strong ideas of apocalypticism. And also, there's another author, which maybe I'll get to in my next video, who um, says that maybe early, early Gnosticism, early Gnosticism, um, budding roots of Gnosticism, was uh, upsetting Paul, and, and that's what prompted him to write the letter of Galatians. So, um, we'll, we'll get into all this stuff. I, I know it's kind of scrambled right now, but just stay with me on this. This will be a fun study. And by all means, if you have any hypothesis, um, feel free to respond to this video, and I will approve. I, I approve everything, um, as long as it's not um, overly bad or anything like that, uh, and is acceptable. What I, what I mean by um, I'm not here to bar anybody's idea from coming in. So uh, if you have your videos on who you think Paul was, 
uh, send them in, or if you disagree with me, you say, Al, um, you're talking a bunch of baloney, um, send that in too. They will be approved because I have no reason not to approve them. So take care, friends, and remember, if everyone's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.